Winter sports have begun on high school sports scene. Hi and welcome to this edition of High School Sports Scene. I'm Colin Parts. Last year, Perry Hall's wrestling team came nine points away from its state championship. Can they repeat that success this year? A year after finishing second in both the county and state 3A, 4A wrestling tournaments, Perry Hall fields a young team with high hopes. Last year we were state runner-up with four county champs, three region champs, and two state champs, and nine points shy from the state title and then uh, here we go into my fourth season which is you know remains to be seen how successful we are this year. Despite losing some wrestlers to graduation and to private schools, Coach Roach likes what he sees from his team. As long as I have guys here that are buying into what we're doing, working hard, mentally tough, focused and willing to commit to this program, we'll be fine. The wrestling is the easy part. You'll, you will learn how to wrestle. But if you can commit to the to mental and physical side of it, you know, we'll be successful. We, we have that here. We're just young. The Gators will build around senior Matt Green at 220 pounds, who won championships at the county and state levels last year. We come in here, we bust our butts for two hours a day. You know, we're running, we're a young team, but we're going to be the most in shape team. We're going to be the most aggressive team out there. Everybody we wrestle, it's going to be a challenge if we're going to lose. We're not going to go down. Easy. He's taking these, these young guys you know, under his wing. He's taught them confidence and, and how to work hard. And when you have a state champion and a guy who's one of the best wrestlers in the country kind of leading your team, it's, it's kind of nice. Junior DJ Grindle finished fourth in the county at 120 pounds last year and is looking forward to this year wrestling at 132. I see us very good, very strong, very focused, and I, I think we're going to do very good this year. We always got to look back on our past and we're just reloading like we did last year and we're just trying to get better and just keep on moving forward. The long-term outlook for the Gators remains promising. We're young, it's just new, but it's exciting because these guys are going to be around for a while and we'll be tough and we'll be competitive. It's, 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 it's going to be fun this year. Now it's time to meet this month's outstanding male student athlete. Here's David Birkenthal with the story. Darren Schmidt is a senior on Patapsco's varsity soccer team. He enjoys his role as the team's goalkeeper. I'm staying in the game. I'm not, I'm not just hanging out there. I'm thinking about my position in relation to the ball, especially if a counterattack might happen or, or a breakaway or something of that sort, so that I can position myself whether I should be further out or further back towards the goal. Darren has grown into his role as a team leader. He knows when, you know, just to be quiet and show by, you know, demonstrating, and then there's other times where he's become vocal, and I think that's where he's grown in the two plus years that I've known him is, you know, when he was first brought on, he was quiet and timid, but he's grown into a more vocal, you know, he takes charge style of leadership. In the beginning of uh, last year, he was more quiet, and even in the beginning of this year, like before we picked our team captains, he was more on the quiet side, but once we once he was team captain and he got the band on his arm, he kind of took leadership. Darren's teammates have also embraced him as their leader. If you ever needed help, he was definitely the guy to go to. I mean, if you had a question about anything, your math homework, if you didn't know a question, you can go up to him and ask him, he'd be right there to help you. And it's kind of why we really want him to be our captain. I hope I am basically the, the example that what they want to follow. Um, both academically and um, on the field. In the heat of the game, in the heat of the moment, um, a lot of things can happen. But I think, I think they see me as, as that, that stoic person who, who, who can, they can rely on. Darren's ability to balance sports with school and involvement in music groups has set a positive example for his teammates. He's definitely one of the busiest kids I know. I mean, band, school, soccer, but he doesn't miss one practice. So especially those ninth and 10th graders that are first coming into high school and playing sports, he show, shows them that you, know, you can be involved in other things outside of sports and still do the schoolwork, still get the good grades that, that you can get. And I mean, Darren's had straight A's for as long as I've known him. Sometimes I feel like I don't get any break 
like when I when I get up in the morning when I go to bed um, it's a it's a struggle but um, through it all I, I try to maintain my focus on on why I'm doing this and and why it's important despite the busy schedule Darren has valued the camaraderie of his team some of the memories that, that I'll have from this season that I'll, I'll keep with me for, for my life so I'm, I'm grateful for the for the coaching staff and, and the players for, for what they've done this season. As a model student athlete at Patapsco, Darren will surely be missed as he moves to take on new challenges with the same commitment he gives to soccer and all his activities. We're going to lose a great student, you know, a student first and an athlete, and you know, our athletic department should very, be very proud of Darren and what he, what he, how he represents Patapsco. We wish Darren and Patapsco the best of luck in the future. For High School Sports Scene, this is David Birkenthal. Next, let's meet this month's outstanding female student athlete. Janie Brown has more. Katherine Hackey is a Patapsco High School senior. As a four-year athlete at Patapsco, she has made her mark on both the school and on her peers. When I first met Kat, I thought she was a very sweet girl. I liked her automatically. She got along with ev she got along with everyone, and like nobody had any problems with her. Catherine enjoys her role for the Patapsco varsity soccer team. I like being like protecting the goal. I feel like I play an important role in what I do, and I just like the fact that I feel like I matter. Catherine is the captain of her team, a position she achieved through hard work and dedication. When she came to us, she may not have had the, the most uh, skill set of anyone on the team, but her hard work and her dedication and her um, ability to ask questions and, and to learn has really made her develop into the player that she is. I have gotten more comfortable with playing soccer. I used to be really iffy about like what I do and like what moves to make, or, and I feel like I've gotten way more comfortable with what I do, and it just comes more natural. Even before her appointment as captain, Catherine has always taken the initiative to lead the team. Kat is definitely a good leader. Even if, like, before we pick captains and stuff, she always leads in team warm-ups, or if everybody needs to talk, like, she'll, like, have everybody get together and talk to each other. I just try to tell them that we can do it. Like, no matter what, we should at least put 110% into whatever we do. I just try to let them know that. Quiet by nature, Catherine leads by setting a positive example for the team. When it comes to the coaches, whenever we need something done for the team, Hacky's always there for us. Um, she's the last one to leave when we get home from away games. She's picking up the things that um, other players may have left behind. So the coaching staff um, love her, her help and dedication. Outside of athletics, Catherine is very involved in other extracurricular activities, as well as being enrolled in the vocal magnet. I don't like to leave anything unfinished, so I do everything. Like if a teacher gives a homework assignment, I can't not do it. I have to like turn it in and it has to be like good or what I think is good. I just, I'm dedicated, I guess. Catherine will take many lessons she's learned through sports past high school, but the sense of friendship she's gained from playing on a team especially resonates with her. I love the fact that I have teams and like I feel like I have another family and like friends I can go to for stuff. And it's just fun. Like I would not take back any of the times I had on the field with my friends and teammates. She is the model. Um, student and athlete and we always say on the team that we wish we had a whole team of hackies because of just everything that she does every day for the team and, and herself. We wish Catherine the best of luck for the remainder of her senior year and we're excited to see what will come from her in the future. For High School Sports Scene, this is Janie Brown. Congratulations to Darren and Catherine. To honor their selection as this month's Outstanding Student Athletes, each will receive an award provided by Allegram Incorporated in Timonium. Coming up next is Randy Dace with Coach's Corner. We'll be back in the new year with another edition of High School Sports Scene. We hope you'll join us then. I'm Colin Parts. Thanks for watching.
Hi, I'm Randy Dace and welcome to Coach's Corner. My guests today are Michael Sy, the Acting Coordinator of Athletics in the Baltimore County Public School System, and our old Acting <laughs> Coordinator of Athletics in the Baltimore County Public School System, Mr. Ron Belenko. And Ron uh, and Michael, welcome to the high school sports scene. I apologize for saying old, Ron, but <laughs> how long have you been around in the Baltimore County Public School System, Ron? Uh, 46 years, Randy, so and you could say that. That's <laughs> outstanding. And Michael, it's great you are a Baltimore County graduate mm -hmm. from Woodlawn High School. Mm -hmm. And when you were there, you were an athlete, student athlete. Tell us the sport you participate in. Well, I'm a product of Baltimore County Public Schools, graduated from Woodlawn High School, uh, played football there and track standout, and enjoyed my career there and went on to the University of Delaware. And then came back and has been involved in the school system since. And I guess as of January, you became the acting coordinator of athletics. How's it been going so far, Michael? Uh, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, <laughs> it's been extremely busy. It's been exciting. Um, very, very blessed to have Ron here with me, help me, walk me through. Uh, but I work with a bunch of great guys, 24 great athletic directors. They all have been very supportive and, and been right there with me, helping me to, to get through this process as we move on through this transition. Now, Ron, you've been an acting consultant for the last year in the athletic department. And uh, when Michael came along, uh, Real excited about seeing him come a homebred uh, student athlete from Baltimore County. Right, there isn't any question, Randy. We had, when Mike uh, was, was named, finally moved in the office, you have a product of the county, as you just heard Mike say, from Woodlawn High School. Uh, it doesn't take that long when you're a product of it to know the system, know the folks in here, and someone coming from the outside with that transition would be tremendously hard. And Mike has made that transition because of, of his ability, uh, the reputation he earned as an athletic director at Woodlawn. Now, Ron, as of June 14th, 15th, it's all over for you, retirement? Retirement, officially retired. Mm -hmm. June uh, 15th will be my last day uh, as far as with Baltimore County Public Schools. And everyone asked me, what are you going to do? First time we could go down the beach and then decide at the end of the summer uh, <laughs> might do work with the NIAAA a little bit and with the State Athletic Directors Association, but, but that's it. So Michael, as we were joking before the taping, the training wheels will be take, coming off and you're going to be riding by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, anything first on your agenda list? Well, I don't know if anything's first on the agenda. Um, the training wheels, I think I've been off for about a, a last past month. Okay. Ron has been turning everything over to me and it's like, here you go. So uh, I'm kind of taking it one step at a time, um, learning as I'm going and just getting used to the process, getting used to the, the different things that Baltimore County expects and, and just trying to live up to the standard that Ron has set. And you've been a coach at Woodlawn and you've also been the athletic director at Woodlawn. Uh, looking back, and I know you're in a completely different role now, but as a coach, you know, teacher, participant, what's, what's great about Baltimore County's athletic program that you always thought that you were great, greatly proud of? Well, I think the thing that, that I'm most proud of is just that the, the amount of love and support that you get from the teachers, the administrators, the staff. And I think what Baltimore County really does that maybe – we can't say for every single school system that they raise they raise young men and young women to be student athletes, and and that's the thing that I took most, I was most proud of coming through because they made sure that I had an opportunity. They presented opportunities for me. They made sure the academics was there. They made sure the athletics was there. They 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 took an interest in me as a whole person, and I think that's what Baltimore County does so well. It's ironic, uh, Ron, but the number of uh, coaches I have on throughout the year. And I say, oh, another graduate of a Baltimore County High School. I know myself, I'm a graduate of Towson High School. I came back because of the role models that I had in the classroom and as coaches. And as you said, Mike, they, it's a great system. And mm -hmm. when you have people come back and want to do the same thing, you know something's going right. You know, Ron, I first ran into you in 1977 at Overly High School. Um, I was a student teacher. And as a great example, Ron was a phys ed teacher at Overly mm -hmm. High School. And uh, you were going to start coaching a pretty new sport over there, right, for Overly? Yep, that was the lacrosse program. And I'll never forget you offered me that opportunity mm -hmm. to work with you, and it didn't work out that way, but the opportunity was great. And, uh, Ron, you, you've been from the trenches to the, to the top dog. Mm -hmm. Looking back, talk to us a little about your career. Uh, when you talk about the career, you mentioned at Overly High School, starting a new sport there at the time in, in lacrosse, along Len Boston, who's over there at Towson with you. He was uh, the mover behind it. And when you take a look at when I first started in Baltimore County, Randy, we didn't have football. 
So you saw football grow, you saw the sport of lacrosse grow, the wrestling program, and you just saw the county grow uh, tremendously since I've been around. It, we, we made a cultural change in the early 90s in athletics by putting up some lighted fields, playing at night, uh, playing uh, football particularly on Friday night or Saturday afternoons without lights. So when you take a look at that potential and the students, uh, our offerings have grown. We added girls sports, we added girls golf over the years, girls track and field, girls soccer. So being part of that and coming up through the trenches, and that's similar what Mike has done. He came up, has come up through the trenches, and you know every phase of it. Someone can't come up to you and say, well, you haven't done this. Yes, I have. Hmm. Trouble is, when you're around as long as I have, it's <laughs> what can you do for me lately, and all these things been in place, and people like yourself do remember some of those things. And another thing, I don't think a lot of people realize, Ron, but besides being the coordinator of athletics in Baltimore County, you served on so many different committees and I know one of the, you know, your special sport to you that you had great love for lacrosse, yeah. wrestling, uh, mm -hmm. football, and people don't realize all that additional time that you're putting in. Well, in order to make an impact on a state level, it's part of our responsibilities to be active on a state level and serve on, on MPSSA committees. And if you're not active, the county or the LEA gets shortchanged. So you must be very active uh, in order to look out for Baltimore County and, and make your presence known. Ron, let me ask you, the first day that Mike came in, Michael came into your office and you sat down and you mm -hmm. talked about things, what was your first words of advice to Michael? First words of advice? <laughs> I gave him a lot of words of advice. Yeah. I don't might remember that. Mm -hmm. But uh, one thing is that uh, advise Mike to do is be visible, be highly visible, be out there, let folks see you. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough job because there are a lot of things that have to take place in the office. Principals are expecting you in the morning. but. You, can't, you cannot operate by email and texting. You have to make that personal contact to be out there to see what's going on. You know, when you coach Randy, if I were on the, side, you know, on the sidelines watching what happens, if there's a bad call to officials, you would come running over right away and say, Ron, where did these officials come from? But you have to be out there to know that you listen and care and support things when, when they, they, they go bad or when they're going well. Now, Ron, that was a setup question because I knew the answer. <laughs> and Michael, the reason I asked him that was because if he didn't tell you that, I was going to tell him that today. Right. Okay. But to be seen, because I will, I've always seen Ron in the gym, mm -hmm. on the field, on the track, and that visibility I think has been very important as a coach and also from the parents and, and also from the teachers. Mm -hmm. Michael, you think you're going to be out in those fields? Well, I, I've been out in the fields already. Um, like Ron said, that was the first thing he told me is to be visible. Mm -hmm. Um, the second thing he told me was to be visible, and the third thing he told me was to be visible. <laughs> so for, He's for a me, realtor like location, yeah, right? So for me, it was easy, you know, just to go out and be myself, get to know all the coaches. You know, um, at Woodlawn High School, I worked with a staff of about 40, 50, and then we worked with the entire county and 24 ADs and hundreds of coaches. So I want to get to know each and every one of them, get to know what they bring to the table as far as Baltimore County athletics is concerned. And in that way, I'll have a good, I'll have my finger on the pulse of Baltimore County Athletics and, and like Ron has done for so many years, he knows everybody. I mean, it's, it's amazing how many times we go out and somebody say, hey, Ron, and he, gives, he calls them back by their name. Right. So if I can ever get to that point where I, I know all of my staff, all 24 schools, the middle schools included, then I think that I'm on the right track. We come up this fall, summer will be like this, right? And something's new this year, Michael. It's called August 11th is the first day of fall mm. tryouts. <laughs> And that's the earliest date we've ever had. Have you had any emails or complaints yet about that one? Or uh, does everybody just sort of say, that's the way it is, let's move on? Well, no complaints yet. Um, we have some things coming down the pipeline that might get some complaints going. Um, <laughs> but no complaints yet. I think everybody is just excited to get the new year started. Um, I'm excited um, being new leadership coming in. Um, it's going to be, it's gonna be um, a short summer. It's already short for me as, I, as the training wheels are taking off. So um, we're, we're really excited. Well, no complaints as of yet, but you know, we can't make everybody happy. So. Well, Jim, we're just about out of time, but Michael, I would give you one suggestion. You might want to get a name tag so your family knows who you are when you come home. Because okay. right? <laughs> Ron always had a name already. tag. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> but listen, Michael, good luck. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we've got a great man for the job. I'm looking forward to working with you as all the other coaches and parents and athletes of Baltimore County. Ron, what else can we say? Uh, you dedicated basically your life to the school system in Baltimore County and did one super job. And uh, we'll miss you, 
Well, I think we'll probably still see you in a field or a gym somewhere because I know you still got that in your blood. But enjoy your retirement and uh, wish you good, good, good health also. Right. Thank you, Randy. For High School Sports Scene, I'm Randy Dace. Thanks for watching. See you next time.